hosted by executive members of the Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha. Jagaran, The Awakening, is a platform for knowledge, inspiration and awakening. Join me next Monday at 4 p.m. Jai Sitaram. Sitaram, pleasant good afternoon, viewers of TV Jagrati and followers on the internet, on Facebook page, the various social media sites. It is of course my pleasure yet again to welcome you to another episode of Jagaran, The Awakening. On behalf of the President General of the Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha, Pandit Krishna Rambali, and our Secretary General, Sri Vijay Maharaj, I welcome you. And on behalf of all executive members of the Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha, this show, Jagaran, The Awakening, it is a program which is meant to be informative and to come home to you. So, I, without further ado, as is customary with us, we will get started with our Mahasabha theme song before we get into our program. Jave Sanatan Ha 
बोलो श्री सत्य सनातन धर्म की जय Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to Jagaran the Awakening. Last week, our first program, we would have celebrated along with all of the children of our nation, International Children's Day. And we would have attempted to show uh, several clips coming from different schools, secondary schools, primary schools, not only within the Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha, but certainly we would have had Vedic school, um, Avocat Vedic school, we would have had from the Ashja girls, um, both Tunapuna and San Fernando. So we would have had a nice range. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to have had the technical team put together uh, last week one of the clips which emanated from our very own Tunapuna Hindu school. And I want to be fair to this young child, this courageous, brave young lady, who would have volunteered on her own to put forward her own sentiments on International Children's Day. But because we could not have it done and packaged in time for showing um, to you, the viewing audience, audience last week, I would want to give her that opportunity this week because our children are our future. So I would want to ask the technical team to run this clip of this very brave young pupil of Tunapuna Hindu School. My name is Ketan Mahabia and I am a standard 5 student of the school uh, SC Tunapuna Hindu School. Okay. What I am reading is what Universal Children's Day means to me. Universal Children's Day means a lot to me because it reminds me of the rights and privileges that I enjoy today that children may not have had long ago. Today is a day that shows that I, as a child, is also a valued member of society and that I must be loved and respected to grow to my full potential. I am so proud to be a child in this wonderful country of Trinidad and Tobago as every child has the right to food, housing, healthcare, free education, life, survival, de development, and the right to self-expression, to hold religious beliefs, and to be free from violence and abuse and have a promise of a bright future. Personally, being here at Tunapuna Hindu School and having these rights, I will be able to gain the knowledge and skills to build a solid foundation that will be beneficial to my future. I can have a chance to realize my maximum potential, a chance to make a vital contribution to receive society, to make a positive impact and give hope for a better tomorrow where my choices can make a difference. Today, I am glad to have a loving and supportive family, wonderful friends and a great teacher. I love and am still loving my childhood and I wish for all children to have the same privileges as well. Happy Universal Children's Day. So a special thank you to that young Caitlin Mahabir of Tunapuna Hindu School. We of course proceed with our program today. So ladies and gentlemen, seekers of knowledge, welcome to Jagaran. Again, this is the show that illuminates the path through the vast social and political landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. Today, we will be discussing an issue that is becoming increasingly important to the safety and security of each and every one of us. I am speaking, of course, about cyber security. In the interconnected world we in inhabit, where every keystroke shapes our future. The need for cyber vigilance has never been more critical. In the new digital economy, where data flows like the ocean's currents, where the pulse of technology beats in harmony with our aspirations, the specter of cyber threats casts its shadow. In October, very recently, we learned that a major cyber attack had occurred at the TSTT, Telecommunications um, uh, Services of Trinidad and Tobago. This month alone, we learned that TT Post as well also fell victim to hackers. And we have many more. Also, recently, the popular shopping outlet, Price Mart, had their secure data breached by hackers, affecting thousands of customers. Earlier this year in April, 
even the office of the Attorney General was the victim of cyber criminals. And according to a Newsday report um, in the newspaper in February, 9th February 2023, in the first half of 2022, the Caribbean experienced 144 million cyber attack attempts with ransomware being the most common breach. Last year, the Trinidad and Tobago Cyber Security Incident Response Team of the Ministry of National Security reported a significant increase in attacks, especially ransomware. One of the most high-profile cases was the attack that forced Massey Group, one of Trinidad and Tobago's largest suppliers of consumer goods and pharmaceuticals, to close its stores. Hackers froze the supermarket chain system and extracted approximately 216 gigabytes of data. And we will hear from the experts what this means to us. In today's program, our expert guests will be discussing the various ways hackers want to steal your data, the ways you can protect yourself, as well as the way in which policymakers throughout the Caribbean can deal with this new reality. So I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to stay tuned and let's awaken ourselves and learn to guard against the threat posed by cyber criminals. We now take... And I would prefer to take a page out of the social statements surrounding this, this topic before we begin our discussions. So I turn to our technical team to put up a, a video clip which would give us some of the more contemporary um, newspaper reports surrounding this issue.
so ladies and gentlemen i hope that that little video would give you an idea of some of the recent articles the headlines should tell you of the threats that we are facing in our society um, hackers um, cyber security um, attacks ransomware we're going to hear about ransom x and all of these um, different terminology uh, phishing and and we will hear the different what what is meant by some of the terms that would be, have been featured recently in our news and throughout social media. I want to, of course, uh, invite and welcome my guests this afternoon, to whom I'm very grateful. And if we can, of course, um, highlight with the guests on, on the wide screen, I know the technical team is on standby. Um, first of all, I would like to make reference and mention uh, Mr. Darren Dory. And Mr. Dory is someone, he is no stranger when we talk about IT. Um, that Mr. Darren Dory is an IT professional with over 20 years of industry experience. He holds a BSc of Computer Studies and Management at UWE, as well as a ME Creative Design Entrepreneurship from UWE as well. He has focused his studies on internet-related technologies, and this has led to his current role as Enterprise Applications support manager at UE St. Augustine. He is also the founder and digital anthropologist at CyberSafe TT Foundation, which is a non-profit organization with a mission <coughs> to educate students um, on cyberbullying, internet addiction, social media etiquette. I know since 2020, Darren has been part of the Facebook Community Standards Regional Group, where he has been provided with the opportunity to shape online safety standards for regional users on the Facebook platform. He generously gives his time to assist many schools, hence my ability to get in touch with him. So he's already out yet doing this work, not only speaking on programs, but he's there in the schools and in terms of treating with digital transformation initiatives. So on my immediate right, Mr. Darren, my right, Mr. Darren Dhuri, I want to say welcome to the program. Thank you very much for giving of your time, Darren. You're most welcome. Happy to be here. Thank you. Um, i no stranger to the studios of Radio and TV Jagrati, part of the Mahasabha family. Um, in the middle, we have Pandit Shiva Janak Maharaj. Um, I know him to be a pioneering educational technolo technologist in Trinidad and Tobago for some 22 plus years with practical experience, expertise in planning, designing, deploying educational technology solutions, strategies, and training at all levels, primary, secondary, tertiary, and adult learning. For the past three years or more, um, I, he has been invited by the Trinidad and Tobago Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group as an educational technologist expert panelist for the Trinidad and Tobago Internet Governance Forum. Uh, he's a pundit of the Pundits Parishad. He teaches at Eldorado North Hindu School. And as I said, this, all of this qualifies him. He is part of the Masaba family. So, Panditji, I want to say welcome and thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Indeed, a pleasure to be here. Sita Ram Tawal. And I know that um, with, the, with his school test having started, <laughs> end of term test, um, children may it not um, enjoy yeah. this part, but I know once they get past this part of their school curriculum and yeah. test is finished, well, it's full-blown. Next, next week for sure. Yes, next, <laughs> next week for sure. It's full-blown <laughs> Christmas celebrations for them, right? And um, he would have taken time to be here from having to mark papers and all of those things, set the exams. Um, again, another person who is very familiar to Radio and TV, Jagrati, who is familiar in the Mahasabha executive. He's an executive member of the Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha also a friend on many programs, whether it be on finance, whether it be on economy proper, whether it be on energy. Um, I refer to, of course, on my other end of, of the spectrum, um, Dr. Bhushan Singh, holder of a BSc, MSc, also has other qualifications from UE. It will take me some time to go through all of those qualifications, just like the other gentlemen, just as I curtailed their qualifications, so too I'll have to do so for Dr. Bhushan Singh. But he is also a lecturer and consultant at UWE, um, Atta Lokjak Global School of Business, uh, former group deputy CEO of the largest credit union in the Caribbean, uh, where he managed some $1.7 billion TT dollars in um, assets and multi-currency investments. He has also contributed to Capital Market Development uh, Committee for Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. 
So his experience, I know, Bushan, um, your consulting assignments working alongside international agencies, including the IADB, um, the, the Inter-American Development Bank. You also had the Korean Exim Bank, um, the Inter-American Investment Corporation. So I think that I know you will have some advice on this um, topic that we are going to deal with today, cybersecurity. So, gentlemen, Sitaram, good Sitaram, afternoon. Thank you very Again, much. my absolute pleasure. It is my privilege to, of course, have you on this program. Uh, this is a topic which, from the headlines that we have managed to put together for the benefit of, of all viewers and, and listeners, um, we would have seen that this year alone, we would have had cyber threats, if not um, labeled as a cyber attack, but cyber threats when schools, um, the majority of public schools, um, whether it belonged to a board or it was properly called government schools, um, they would have received bomb threats. Bomb threats. Um, then you would have had a very recently um, presentation, college Chagonas, and I think they continue to be harassed with emails and, and, and communications about there being a bomb in the school. And so these are matters that, you know, it, it, it goes straight to our youths, our children who are at school. They are not immune. One would think that even as people want to, 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 to solicit and, and, and enlist um, some kind of terrorist reign, um, that they would still have some respect for the kids. They don't. Um, so, so we will be getting into that. We would have seen some very large conglomerates. We are talking about Price Smart, Massey Group. Um, we are talking about uh, partially, largely state-owned entities, TSTT. Uh, we are talking about government ministries. If anybody would have the, the resources to somehow protect themselves, protect the entity in terms of cybersecurity, one would expect the ministries to, to have been developing and, and, and maintaining some kind of level of um, reduction in risk. And, and we have been seeing the Ministry of Attorney General. We have seen the judiciary. Um, on one particular occasion, the judiciary, th th that would have caused lawyers, um, you know, not being able to upload or file their documents. Judges had concerns, even though they, they would have had um, issuance of communication from the judiciary itself. Even the judges would have independently highlighted some of their concerns about this whole affair. So I, I think the, the, the population at large, they understand that all is not well in terms of the threats that we are now facing in terms of technology. When we use our devices, um, when it is we have to do our banking, when it is we have to go and transact business and, and so your information <coughs> is now delivered to a confidential um, source, so it may be a ministry, it may be the bank, mm -hmm. it could be even when you take out your, your card, your, your membership card at Price Mart, who knows, and, and these are the things that we are seeing. So I want to just, first of all, before we get very focused in the discussion, um, let me ask um, Mr. Dori, um, what are your views and thoughts in terms of what we have been experiencing recently in the society, if you want to share that with us first? Sure, no problem. Thank you and good evening to everyone. Uh, I think if the, 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 the public um, wasn't really aware as to the extent of the attacks, seeing that video that introduced the segment would have definitely made them very aware. I mean, there were so many articles. You know, even I was sitting there, I was like, when is this going to finish? You know, and it, there were so many. So that's to say, you know, these type of attacks will impact everyone you know we, we, may, we may think that well i am just this little person in my home just doing my own transaction i might buy one or two things online or i might not even <coughs> buy things online at all now we were we are privileged to know that information is out there about you and i, I think that's the important point that we want to, to, to bring across home a, a hack as we call it or a data breach resulted in your personal information being in the hands of well, we don't know who, it's, who, who, who owns that information. And now that presents a cause for concern for the average person. Thank you. Um, certainly, your, your perspective is something viewers would understand that they need to pay greater attention to detail, yeah. given what we are now experiencing. Um, before I come back to you, uh, Mr. Dori, maybe I can kick off a little bit with Pandit Shiva Janak. Um, what are the different, uh, maybe you can just start the ball rolling in terms of what are the different types of 
um, cyber attacks. I know we don't have the time to go into the, the you know <laughs> definitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what are the, the, the based on what you have seen, given your background, what are the maybe two or three of the most common type of attacks that we should be prepared for, and definitely. then we take the discussion again. Sure, definitely. So uh, one that was major in the um, headlines is ransomware. Yeah. Right, so ransomware basically is a software that captures your data and your information, and of course, for you to retrieve your information and your data, you have to pay for it. Yeah. Right, ransom like kidnapping. Right, so they kidnap any data now. They no longer kidnap any people. They kidnap any data because they know how valuable the data is to an organization, right? So that's one of the major ones. A denial of service is another big one, right? So like um, internet service providers and so on, if they get hit with a denial of service, blocking the service, so any organization means that they cut your communication, they cut your, your, your connection to whatever you're trying to access. So that's another big one that is, you know, a wrong. And I know watching the headlines, it showed me back to a program I would have shared with you that we did on Digital Guru right here on, the, on TV and Radio Jagrati, 2016, 2017 back then, yes. right? And, and, and these, at, in that program we highlighted, even though you see all these on, on, on the headlines, yeah. the fact is there are many that you don't know of, sure. yeah, yeah. especially there are institutions where it will be a people, the, the public of loss of confidence if it is really to go out how bad it is for these institutions. We really would be in a, a mess. Um, let me just get Bushan in on it and, and, and so we break the ice completely. Um, Bushan, we, we are going into the, well not going into, we are already into the most intensive commercial activity-wise period of the year. Yeah. Um, we, we have just finished Diwali, yeah. and, 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 and for many, if not most, um, once Diwali is finished, it is full-blown Christmas celebration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shopping, um, a lot of cashless transactions, so, you know, ever so often, if my wife allows me the use of my credit card, I would whip <laughs> out that from my wallet and I would buy some Christmas decorations or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so you have a lot of things that you will be, you know, investing from the yeah. point of view of businesses. You're talking about businesses having... Um, they, they, they're most, um, they, they're the biggest turnover, yeah. right, for the year. And, and so this is a time I would think is the highest risk. Um, yeah. what, what, you know, in, in, in passing, just in summary, what do you think um, we should probably, or, or viewers and listeners should be most aware of during this period, given what we are seeing now with all of these cyber attacks? Well, Sitaram Dine, Sitaram uh, viewers, I think first and foremost, it requires some diligence on the, the part of the consumer. Mm. And this diligence, as you rightly mentioned, we are moving more and more into paperless yeah. and cashless and online. And, online. Mm. and this paperless, you, your bank statement now, very often is mm. you don't get that um, in the mail again, your bank statement is online. Your credit card statement, some banks, you no longer get a, a physical credit card statement, you go online. And this shift from paperless to online, so people go, they pay, or they, they have, they set up the app that you pay your credit card um, automatically. And what has happened, as in the case with uh, recently, charges were put onto people's credit cards for purchases that they didn't make. And I am seeing with uh, increasing frequency that people are not taking the time to reconcile as when they had paper statements. Right. They are not taking the time to reconcile their bank statements, their credit card statements. So if there are charges that go on to that, most times they just pay it without realizing. You know, it might be small yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. You know, hackers are smart people. Or, or, or mistakes could happen with, with financial institutions, as has happened recently. Mistakes could happen. And if it, with it, it, if it is within certain parameters, those mistakes could go unnoticed if you are not diligent enough to reconcile your expenses. Make sure that is an important thing that um, I am sure people are getting hit with it and they're not realizing it. Darren, let me ask you to, to, to chide in here. Um, what, what, what advice or what direction would you want the viewers to, to start um, <coughs> adopting 
knowing that you know this is now on the rise, how, how do we treat with this situation moving forward? Yeah, um, you know, being diligent is mm. is of course a very good um, bit of advice. Mm. But when we're speaking about the you know the recent and more occurring threats, fishing, fishing is one that you know I think it's of you know extreme importance. And for the viewers out there. Fishing, we're not talking with a, a line and hook, right? It's actually it's P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. It is a, a trick that, you know, I don't like to use the word hackers anymore. Yeah. I find hackers sort of give them a little bit of prominence. They are cyber criminals, cyber criminal. right? Um, it is an act that cyber criminals use to trick you into acting on something. And they would, you know... Prey on your sense of urgency and your emotion. So they might send you a text message or an email or WhatsApp, and it will probably say, hey, you need to do this now, otherwise you will lose access to this. Even your bank, you know, you might be, you have to sort out this with your credit card. And you're reading this phishing email, and it is so on point, using the logo of the bank, I mean, even down to the text and font. So being diligent is one thing, yeah. but I have seen some extremely sophisticated phishing emails, oh, yeah, yeah. right, that could, could, could fool even the most astute yeah. person. Yeah. Therefore, I really like what you said with respect to the reconciliation. Yeah. Because, you know, technology makes things efficient for us, yeah. and with that we tend to forget, yes. you know, the little review and yeah. overview. Yeah. And you're right, these cyber criminals are extremely brilliant. Yeah. They will hit you a $50 charge or something charge, <laughs> yes. and you might mm, take it on. And, you know, it's, it's something for us to be extremely aware of. So I, I do agree, you know, you have to be diligent. But at the same time, sometimes you have to kind of go back a little bit old school, yeah. you know, and, and don't forget about, you know, what you would have done in the past to ensure, especially when it comes to your finances. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned phishing, P. <coughs> P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Yeah. Um, so for, for viewers to, to understand, um, not necessarily what the word means, but, but oh, let us give maybe another example, one yes. or two examples of how phishing occurs. It could come in the way of, a, uh, my understanding is it can come by email. Mm -hmm. An email. So it is, yeah. it is something that plays on, on, on they are obviously, they, they, they are aware of certain familiarities that mm -hmm. people would look yeah. for in their emails. So this is where I would need your gentleman's help as to how this thing actually well, works. I, so I what just wanted to add one more to Darren, which I've noticed recently. With the advent of an <coughs> increasing prominence of AI, you're seeing where AI could uh, replicate your voice, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. So fishing could, and and everything. It could come by uh, a phone call as well. And yes. this is why if a financial institution calls you, um, there's usually some type of verification, sure. you know, name, address, data, whatever it is, whatever yeah. is the very, you know, and, and not just fall victim to, I am calling from yeah. AOB. Then to tap into that, yeah. if you don't mind, yeah. to tap into that, yeah. what, is, what is the data that was breached? Correct. It, it was, was your personal information, it was yes. your ID yeah. card, it was yeah. this and that. So yeah. It's That's really scary. Of, yeah. It's really, really scary to think that, you know, some of the things yeah, that we... Yeah, had it in a whole yeah. different yeah. level of yeah. this. Now, yeah. one of the headlines that we saw, Prime Minister... Well, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact <laughs> right. headline, but it was to the effect that <clears throat> Prime Minister fearful of using the ATM. Yeah. So is this another point where oh, that, persons that could be hacked oh, yeah. uh, at, at the point of Definitely. just withdrawing cash or depositing or something? Yeah, like that. ATM is now a high risk maneuver it is, yeah. from the cyber and from general crime general situation. General crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was at the ATM a couple days ago. I have a habit now. Yeah. When I walk up to the ATM, yeah. the, the slot that you put your card in, yeah. I shake it. Yes, no, yeah, yes. Right? make sure. I do that myself. Yes. So in the guy next to it is like, I don't know if you thought I was trying to break the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was just clearing the air. I said, yeah. well, you know, there is a device that you yeah. put that you just cover the, 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 this, this yeah. area. Capture it. And it could copy your card. Yeah. And then I showed him, you look on top and see whether or not it looks funny cameras, in terms of there could be cameras there. So yeah. they capture a card. Yeah. The camera captures the pin. Yeah. Yeah. And there you go. Yep. So the, the shaking of it, uh, is that s similar to what is called skimming? So well, what, skimming yeah. is the name of the way they get the information. Yeah. Right. I was so shaking, the shaking is to make sure there's no skimming devices <laughs> yes, <right. Okay. laughs> capturing the data. So, yeah. so ladies and gentlemen, yeah. let's see if we could get this, you know, properly launched. Yeah. 
there are different methods. Phishing is just reference to one yeah, type yeah. of it. I think there is another reference to, to when you use WhatsApp. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. can you, you can use information and share it by way of WhatsApp. I suppose mm -hmm. when you get this WhatsApp, With you think that you, you, there's a link, and when yeah. you click on that yeah. link, well, yeah. automatically mm -hmm. your device starts to, to, yes. to divulge information. Mm -hmm. um, I know, um, Pondichiva, you have, um, and, and I know Darren as well, so all of us will chip in on this, but um, in terms of this is, we, 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 we started off by speaking about this economic intense period. Yes. Um, what is the position? I know that it is fashionable to give gifts, right? That goes without yeah. saying, during Christmas time. Um, in some cases, parents, not even if at Christmas time proper, what they do is because the children have done probably well in exams. In other cases, they may not have done well, but parents want to occupy the children, so they give them a device. And they say, well, okay, um, this is for you, so you have something, some extracurricular activity during the vacation. Um, what would you suggest in terms of advice what should we look out for is uh, our children at risk in terms of, you know, not just this period, but I'm saying yeah. that, you know, we could expect more of it now. Sure. And what advice would you give and, and, and how do we treat right. with the situation with our children? I just want to add something to the discussion from yes. before. Before I go into that, the, the, term, the term that we use is social engineering. Yeah. So they know to what, what hackers or cyber criminals do now, because we have ethical hackers, so we don't want to you know, use the name yeah. bad, right? So what these cyber criminals do now, it's easier for them to look at your social media and gather information on you and send you an email that they, they know you will relate to yes. and get you to click on that link, right? Through the social engineering. It's easier for them to do that than to try and write a code for a malicious software as, to, to get you. And as I mentioned <laughs> before, you can actually share multiple um, social media accounts for oh, one person yeah. Yeah. to an AI tool and Good. say, hey, yeah, and, and develop gather a, all the information. Develop, a, develop an email sure. you know, of this yeah, sort. I'm trying to remember person. the name of the Netflix show that has some really strange these technological things. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll come to me sometime. All right, but back to, back to the, um, the usage of what we, when we're giving these gifts to children. One of my major things that I advocate is competency. So we live in this world where we could have to deal with all these things, but as we as a, as a people, are we competent to live in this digital society? So that's where I, my, my whole research and all my, my work have been um, focused around 21st century competencies, right? How to live in this digital world, right? So when we, we speak of children, um, I know Dinesh, you would have seen, well, on those talks when we have the um, conferences, we need to get things like digital citizenship and all these things in our schools. We need to teach these children from this young age, because as you are aware, as the age they started picking up the, the, uh, the devices, right? And the devices now, that's just the technological part or they know how to swipe, and, but they don't know the correct terms, and the definitely competency is knowledge, skills, and attitude. Right? So they have knowledge, they have skills, but we're not teaching them that aptitude of how to use things. Yeah, how to use things. Yeah, of how to use things in the correct manner, ethically, mm -hmm. and all these things. We're not teaching that at all. And that's a major component in the future of our cyber safety, if we must say. Must say you know? As you mentioned that, um, and, and before I ask Darren uh, to, to chide in as well, um, Pandit, you have a situation where some of us use our devices. Yeah. Um, once you use this device once and, and, and you input your credit card information yeah, yeah. to purchase, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's to purchase an iTunes card, yeah. whether yeah. it is to probably do something on your Facebook page or make mm -hmm. an online transaction, whatever. Your device stores, stores this information, it. cookies, <laughs> right? And and then what happens now? Your children, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You know, you, sometimes right. you use it because you this the site you are actually purchasing from, the entity is one that has been tested and tried yeah, by you, and, and it course. is reputable. Yeah. So so that information, you you're not too worried about where it is going to end yeah. up. But to me, yeah. is it that you, you know? Are we taking too much of a risk in our, in, in putting that information and then allowing our children? to use the same devices. And you know when they're playing games, well, 
<laughs> that's when things pop up and they say, purchase no, this no, and no, purchase I actually, that. I actually have an incident of someone I know, a parent, who would have saved that. We could call names like Amazon. Yes. <laughs> so, so the parent would have saved their, their credit card information yeah. on Amazon. Got a bill for over $20,000. But who buy all this? Yes. It was a child. Yeah, right. The child went on finding things and just charging, charging, buying. So it is a reality. Well, the, 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 um, the charging is one thing. Yeah. My, my, my concern is um, should we be keeping a closer eye? Yes. Oh, yeah. But well, should we be keeping an eye in terms of when they purchase on certain sites? Mm -hmm. Is that a risk in itself that your personal credit card information could be captured? on the site that the children goes on. Is that somehow possible? Oh, do you mean those children sites? Um. There's two things. One, maybe Darren and, and, and could, could come in this too. The fact is that we have so many accounts and so many passwords. You have email and banking and, you know, the whole plethora of things with passwords, your login password, and which is a burden something to remember all your passwords and people the computer, your phone, whatever, could so, you know, Make conveniently store everything. Mm -hmm. And people now forget the password. And everything is on your computer. Somebody get hold of your computer or your phone, they have access to mm -hmm. everything. Not just your children, but everything. Your credit card, your, all your uh, email, everything they have access to, you know. Um, so we have to, you have to find a way to really secure some of your, your passwords and not trust the technology to store everything for you in some of these instances. You know? Yeah, that. yeah it's, I mean, I think if we go back to, you know, the original question with respect to giving the devices to yeah. the kids and so on, right? Um, there are so many terms that we could, that we could reference here. You have, other than the security aspect yeah. of things, you have internet addiction, yes. right? And then you have this whole mm -hmm. prevalence of cyberbullying. All of these things could emanate from by just simply giving the child this device, device without the educational component, mm -hmm. right? Without, the, you know, the awareness. And that's where yeah, cyber safety awareness. comes yeah. in, right? You know, we go to schools and we speak to kids mm -hmm. about being safe on the internet. I asked the question, I mean, we were privileged enough to do surveys throughout Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. a few years ago, right? Mm -hmm. We partnered with TAT. And over 60% of the students said, well, no, we, we, we have no rules, right? Mm -hmm. the, the other, 40, when they said rules, it was just, well, I couldn't use it at the dinner table. Right. No real yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, rules, yeah, right? Yeah. But I asked the question of the parents, and if there are any parents listening on this evening, you know what you can get on the internet. You know what you can search for. Yeah. There is no difference than when your, your child yeah, actually sits and uses the same Google well, search. Access, yeah. And here's the interesting thing. They may not be searching for it, but your internet history remains yeah. there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So from the content that you look at, we have to be aware that it could also make its way to, you know, the child. Yeah. But you also have, as you said, purchases. Yeah. Many cases have, have come to, to, to us, right? Yeah. There's an old guy, I think he was in his 70s, and he uh, playing on his phone, and he's saying, you know, buy this and buy that, not to realize that you rack up a... But he maxed out his credit card. Boy, yeah. Oh, my. Right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it is interesting because... We tend to be oblivious when we're in, 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 in this device, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes parents use it as a, as, as, as a babysitter. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. they're there and they're going about their business, thinking everything is fine. Yeah. But other than these charges that we now yeah. have to find a way to pay for, mm -hmm. content and so on, I, I think it's, it's, it's worrying where we assume the authority over the device towards, you know, the, the kids and yeah. not, you know, intervene and interact. And it's not but, just... The purchasing part of it, you know, yeah. but you have, um, you know, pedophiles and all oh, these yeah, people yeah, that yeah. could, you know, get yeah. onto your children online, yeah. mm -hmm. unknown to you, yeah. and that is a serious risk in itself. Um, in on the, on the newspapers, we have read about several people um, being held up trying to purchase things online, you know, it, on, and, and on they, Facebook they, marketplace. Yes, and they, yeah. they mm -hmm. met at certain places, and it, and it was a scam. And children too, and as adults, children too, unrestricted um, access, access to the to the web mm -hmm. could fall victim to some of these things, right? Yeah. So that that is a, a, a serious. It, we could yeah. we could chime into that because this is a very I think extremely serious point. Mm -hmm. 
I, I had the opportunity to do a little bit of research and then make a presentation on human trafficking in the digital age. Mm. Now, we would think human trafficking is the physical movement of somebody from one place to the next and yes. holding them, you, yeah. know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, against their will. But there's a new definition. You can actually be trafficked right in your bedroom, you know. Hmm. Okay. So the, the whole concept of, of, of being under duress and not being able to do what you yeah. want to do, yeah. right, yeah. falls under this whole ideal of human trafficking. And research has shown that, uh, you know, um, teenage girls in particular, yeah. not, not that it's limited to them alone, yeah. mm -hmm. have fallen prey to this um, act because they met someone online and that person online ended up you know, coercing them to do certain things. Yeah. Now, of course, they know that they're engaging in yeah. improper behavior, so yeah. they're not going to yeah. tell anybody. Yeah. 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 And this is how they keep, you know, them, you know, under wraps. Yeah. So if you tell anybody, I'm going to divulge this information to yeah. your parents and to the world. Yeah. So simple things like if you're fine, your, 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 your kids behaving in a way where they're hiding in the room or yeah. they're very secluded yeah. and they look and see when police are around, this kind yeah. of thing. And you know, well, why, why should I be? Yeah. That, that is actually a real yeah. case of, of what you're yeah. referring to. So, yeah. so one of the major things to tie it up in terms of when you're given a device, many parents, and I hope all the parents that are listening to us today, are not aware that all these devices, including your modems, and your cable boxes and all of them come with parental controls. There you go. Parental controls. Yeah. They come with it. And it, they have, well, they may not be simple for everyone to, yeah. to but they, the parental controls are there. And many people are just not aware of it. So you can filter the, the, the channels that your children could watch on your yeah. TV. You could filter the content that your, you, your child gets from the modem, yeah. right? And, and the other thing about it too, when given these gifts, you have to keep be age appropriate, right? So one of the things is that you see a lot of young children on social media, but as far as I know, 13 and 18 and so on is the legal age yeah. to be on social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you've seen all these primary school children and all these other children yeah. on social media. So parents need to be aware of that as well. Even to use WhatsApp? What's up? 16 years, 16 and, over. years <laughs> and over. Well, let, let me see. I, I, so if I understand this correctly, um, for, for, for our parents and, and, and everyone, yeah. but particularly our parents, the, the, we, we, we accept that the horse has bolted, bolted. from the stable, oh, so yes. to speak, right? Running so this road. phone, if I am um, to take a longer drive than yeah. my son can put up with, yeah. I hand this phone over to him while right. he's in the back seat and I yeah. say, well, you know, you, you assist yourself, right? Yeah. He goes on to this. So the, the horse has bol bolted, as I said. We, yeah. we naturally give our children devices as gifts, yeah. as incentives. They do well in tests to pass the time. Yeah. Um, Darren, you said uh, it's a babysitter, right? A babysitter. So, so our, our devices have now become a babysitter, right? This is what occupies the children. It's one thing to say, well, it's yeah. spoiling the eyes and stuff, but we'll get to that in another yeah. session. You are suggesting that parents now implement or, or somehow maintain parental uh, control. Um, control. The devices come with that yeah. built in. So, so this is where, um, Pandit, um, Shiva, you yeah. and, and, and Darren, maybe you can just give us a couple minutes on um, how. Let, let's give an example right. on so how they can access it. One of the perfect examples was when we had the, um, the pandemic. Of course, everything had to run online. Mm -hmm. So our school was in... in, in um, in the middle of setting up the whole Google platform and so on, officially with the .edu and everything, right? But in the interim, we had to use Google accounts. And we advise our parents to use the parental control, the right. family, family link. login yeah. link, yeah. right? So by giving your child that email, every email that goes to that account, the parent is yeah. made aware of it. Right? Because these are, these are minors, they are underage. Actually, if you go to sign up for the Google account, and as long as you put the age under, I think it's 12, you automatically are, you are guided to set up the family mm -hmm. Gmail. Right? But people to skip all that, they lie and put a yes. different birth date, yeah. right? Yeah. thereby making your child fully susceptible to, to all the, the negatives that could come without you managing it. So that's an a, a example of parental control. Android devices, they have parental control built in. iOS devices, they have their own, each, each platform will have their own 
parental controls where you could, in the device, you could control how much time the child could spend. So all these are there. And as we mentioned before, I, and, and it has always been there in the modems and in the, the TV boxes, the parental control, but not even these providers are educating the end users yeah. that this is there and you can use it to keep your child safe. Darren, you want to, to, to tell us a little bit about parental control, which possibly exists for Facebook users? And oh, yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I like, I like to tell parents, be the parent in the virtual world the same way you are in the real world, mm -hmm. right? So in the, in the real world, we don't have all the answers to yeah. all of the problems, yeah. but we try our best. Yeah. And I feel that we're not trying our best in the virtual world, yeah. so at least just try your best. Um, you know, unfortunately, some of the things Monashiva said, you know, the kids probably know how to bypass them oh, already, yeah. right? <laughs> so we could be, definitely, I think it is an approach to, to deal with the younger audience who are not that inquisitive yeah. compared to the older ones because yeah. they inculcate in behavior, exactly. yeah. right? It's From never, young it is never a technology solution and mm -hmm. we have no silver bullets here, yeah. Yeah. right? But it's really about inculcating good behavior, right? Mm -hmm. um, I do like, however, the screen time and yeah. the do not disturb features in most of these phones. Yeah. It tells you, listen, after a certain time, you really should not be on the device. Yeah. Yeah. In one of my interactions with the cybercrime and social media unit, um, they indicated that in the social spaces, because then we asked about Facebook and, and well, Instagram and TikTok, in the social spaces, during the hours of two and four is when they actually received the most reports, or yeah. they, they've, they've realized that the most infractions happen in the online space mm. right. for a younger audience. Right. Yeah. What they're doing on the device at 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning. That's right. Right? Yeah. Right. You know, so we, we do have a, a little bit of um, parental control from yeah. the manual side to say, hey, you know, put your device out in the room or not, not within oh, yeah. your reach and so on. In the Facebook platform, as well as on Instagram and TikTok <laughs> and Snapchat and I mean we could list as we go mm -hmm. along. Yeah. There are it, the thing is you, you hit the nail on the head. You're supposed to put your your your, your age, your your yeah, actual age, to. and the platforms themselves will guide you. Will guide you and they will right. put certain types of information mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. But I, I figure it's a gentleman's agreement. If I know, if I put that I'm 21 and I'm 12, it's, <laughs> it's not going to do anything and I'm going to see the content that's available for adults, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be truthful, you have to be honest. Uh, parents could easily look at the device. And I, I realize as well, e even, even at, at my place, you don't really look at your kids' phones. Yeah. But we do have the authority to do so. And I think maybe it's time we start thinking in that way. It's like, hey, I would go to a school and say, if I were to ask any one of you, those kids, to show me what you have in your WhatsApp, would you be willing to just share that yeah. information? Or forget me, suppose it's nanny or nano, or grandma <laughs> or grandpa. Yeah. You think you could show them yeah. what you have in that particular chat? And yeah. you could see by the look the, on the, their the, faces the expression, yeah. that they have something that shouldn't be there. Yeah. So I think there's a level of awareness that's, that's there. But we kind of also need to look at, uh, you know, informing them mm -hmm. what are the sanctions and maybe we could talk about that you know a little bit later yeah. what i would want to do is just I, I i like the fact that you said that for parents so so before we move on to another aspect yeah. of, of this discussion i darren i like how you say that um the same way we would parent yeah. in, in in reality in real life um we should parent virtually as well mm -hmm. because i think that what people understand is that, look, you, you would pay attention to, um, okay, where my child is to be picked up after school, mm -hmm. right? They, they should not exit the gate, and at the gate there is posted a security guard and what have you. You, know, you have systems. You work with the systems because in real life these are things you can see. Mm -hmm. You perceive it clearly, so you work with these things. You know you, you give them certain advice, you tell them don't do certain things. Mm -hmm. But in the virtual world, you don't see the reality of how great mm -hmm. these, these, these attacks could be. Yeah. You're not understanding that they could be susceptible. You said that you can have human trafficking yeah, yeah. in your bedroom yeah. mm -hmm. of teenagers and, and others as well. Yeah. So I think um, we, we, I, I agree with you on that point. I want to really re let it resonate with parents. You need to parent your children even more virtually yeah, yeah. than you would in <coughs> real life because that is where you are losing them and, and they are being exposed to information all around the world yeah. mm -hmm. and possibly you know people checking in on them and taking their information 
you don't know. Abushan, I know you wanted you, to share something. You know, um, Darren had raised a, a very important point earlier. And um, when he said that, um, you know, parents use the devices as, as the babysitter. Yes. And I want to, you know, just clarify the point here that a device is not a substitute for a parent. Hmm. A device is not a substitute for human contact, hmm. for human con conversation. And I, I would, I've experienced this myself. I have taught, I've lectured face to face to adults, masters, doctoral people. I, uh, I'm, I've also lectured online and people have an online persona <laughs> and a real persona. A bipolar or? <laughs> well, no, but you see, there are people who, you know, face to face, in a they are unable to communicate. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. very scared, mm -hmm. timid, mm -hmm. right? Confidence. To, they, 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 they cannot uh, speak in a public forum or, uh, uh, or as much as a classroom. But online, if you have an online class, they could go in and they will type their comments on the chat, very active on the, on the chat and so on. And you also have the reverse, mm -hmm. that people, you know, some people are, might be timid on a chat, but, but then, on face-to-face, -face, face, yes. mm -hmm. they, they, and you know, if you read some research, uh, if you allow children to think that this is a substitute for human contact, you really, they're going to grow up uh, 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 to be to, uh, with, a, with a certain part of the personality, their deficit in a certain part of their development. They must, you know, you have to make sure that they appreciate this human contact and, and, and human conversation and not fall into a false sense of security in our virtual world. You know, not everything that we access here is the truth, mm. right? Appropriate, <laughs> whatever it is. And we must make sure that we, even with the, the safeguards, mm -hmm. just, you know, if we assume that all, you, you have all the safeguards, but the time, too much exposure online, uh, forcing the brain to think, giving the brain that sense of comfort, that, okay, online, communicating, this, that, but then your personality going to have a deficit because you have to function one day in a real world, interact with real people, and, you know, so, so and, and there's a real dilemma there that people have to determine, um, you know, wh how much time is appropriate um, online and, you know, face-to-face. -face. We, we had that problem with, um, during the pandemic, yeah. when children had um, um, only online schooling and so on. Well, handwriting, penmanship, I think that must be all they don't know, <laughs> right? But <laughs> yeah, we are losing the art of communication, yes. communication. through digitization. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, of <laughs> course, this program, and, and, and particularly what we have done so far, gentlemen, I'm grateful right. to all yeah, of you. Thanks. This first part uh, of our segment um, was meant to really touch on knowing what period we are going into. Yeah. We may think the cyber hacking and, and, and um, the, the, the cyber attacks will be limited to, to, to big entities, organizations. Yeah. Yeah. But it could really filter down into your home. So I really wanted the first segment, and I'm indebted to you all in terms of treating with it so that parents understand yeah. that this is something that doesn't only exist outside with Correct. your banking information, yes. your banking institutions, you're shopping at PriceMart, you're going somewhere and you're swiping your card. This is something that could filter straight into your home, and, and therefore you have to protect your children. So I hope that we have at least scratched the surface that they will know that they need to be um, especially careful with how their children are handling devices, what they are doing um, from now moving forward and particularly over Christmas time. Don't give the children um, gifts, technological, you know, advanced gifts if you are not prepared from what I'm hearing here yeah, today, if you're not prepared to abide by the parental controls, you are setting up, you're not giving them a gift you're actually giving them a weapon which they can use to harm themselves and harm you at home. So I want to just change <laughs> tact a little and, and maybe we can go on a more, well, for want of a better word, Bush, and we can say macro, um, <laughs> you know, analysis of this whole thing. But before doing so, um, I know the technical team, someone sent me something on WhatsApp and maybe we can put that picture up on the screen. And gentlemen, I'll let you all take the pick with this because you all spoke about fishing. 
But um, can anyone relate this in terms of what, what they should be looking? Because I think you're always saying they use similar languages oh, and yes. whatever. So maybe we can use this to explain to the audience one of the ways in which hackers are able to get your information. So this, is, this is where they, they, they actually have to look and be aware of what are the official domain names and so forth. Right? So for example, the clickbank.com might be the original real thing, right? But you see the other one on top. <laughs> they have all these other things in between. So like uh, one that people get catch a lot of it is PayPal and, and, and Amazon and all these. They have little changes in the, the domain name or the URL itself. That, that if you were you know, in a hurry and you just click in and you say, oh no, look, the bank um, wants some, yeah. some information. And you click on it yeah. and then you put in your private address. They want a password reset for your, your email or something yeah. they might ask you for, right? Or some other sensitive information. You have to be very aware of, uh, and I'm sure you would do some stuff for the kids as well in, yeah, yeah. in getting them to recognize these things. So interestingly enough, um, the, the browsers, yeah. Chrome and Safari and Firefox and so on, they, they, they are aware of, of these type of scams. Um, and I guess one, one tip, one bit of advice to the users out there is make sure your, your browsers and your operating systems, your computers yeah, are updated. updated. That's another right? thing we don't. Yeah, yeah. So once it's updated, uh, it could pick, say, hey, you know, mm. this looks like yeah. a suspect link. It doesn't those look like. Those libraries are yeah. updated all the time yeah. with these, these with, kinds with of With this information. Links. Yeah. It doesn't look. It, because, I, I mean, who, who are we to know that the A is supposed to look like yeah. that as yeah. opposed yeah. to the other version, yeah. right? It's, that's, yeah. that's almost impossible for someone to, 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 to look at. Now, in the event you receive a message like this with that, you know, phishing scam or whatever it is. And it urges you to click on something. I, I always make this recommendation. Whether it is an email or your bank, Amazon or whatever it is, forget the email, forget the message. Mm -hmm. Go straight to the source. So yes. You the go straight to Amazon, you go straight to your yeah. bank, go straight the to Netflix. Yeah. If there is a problem on your account, mm -hmm. you'll see it as soon as you log in. Yeah. If when you log in, you see nothing, you know that that was a scam. So yeah. some of the emails mm -hmm. might be easy for you to decipher. But the recommended thing is this, and don't click on the links, because yeah. it will send you to a site that looks yeah. exactly like, exactly like you know, the like original. Yeah. Instead, you go to what you have stored on your computer as Amazon.com, you type it up, original. you do what you have to do, and determine whether or not there is so something you need to do. that's a very good advice account. to keep your browsers updated, yeah. because it will automatically tag you and say, do you want to go forward? Yeah. Do you want to advance yeah. or go back to safety? Yeah. Yeah. That's a message you will get Correct. when you go to these suspicious mm -hmm. sites. Well, um, Darren, and on Facebook, um, I, I can use it on my phone. I'm not very familiar with the different um, icons, if I may use that yeah. term. But I know there's one which, which there's a bell, yeah. and, and the bell, you will see numbers, and it, so it means you have four or five yeah. alerts or messages to, oh, to yes. telling you, yeah. you know, you could yeah. check. Um, it may be Pandit Shiva has posted something. Yeah. He and I, we are friends on yeah. Facebook. He has posted something. Yeah. Dr. Bhushan Singh has put something. Yeah. You are tagged on something. But I've noticed recently that there are certain um, prompts coming up on that alert. Yeah. And when you look at it, they're telling you something about your security has been breached. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to upgrade in order to treat with the security breach, you have to click on something. Of course, I don't click on it, but is that so it exists in Facebook as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, All yeah. the platforms. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway. At the end of the day, and I think everyone, as in all of the big companies, realize we're not going to use the term terminology, click on this to solve the problem. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that is exactly what yeah, gets yeah, to your yeah. problem in the first place. So any notification like that that you receive, no, no you know, don't click on the links. Yeah. Now, I want to change, uh, to, you know, shift focus to, to Tabusha. <coughs> um, you all mentioned go back to the source, right? Yeah. So, so, so you, if, if it is you, you deal with Amazon and stuff, you go back directly to Amazon and, yeah. and that is where you do your shopping, you input mm -hmm. your information. Yeah. Yeah. Forget this other, you know, um, message, message or, or which is suggesting a new link and, mm -hmm. and things like that, right? Now, Bushan, the, the challenge, in my mind, a lot of people complain about this and, and I want to complain about it as well, yeah. is that sometimes with, with, with your banks, right? Yeah. In, in the banking industry, what you face is that almost always yeah. you and you are getting an automated machine yeah. mm -hmm. i don't know that these days you you are able to call an institution particularly yeah. banks yeah. 
Yeah. And yeah. to override their automated system, you press zero because yeah. you want to get to the operator, the operator. Because you want to hear somebody tell you. Yeah. You want to tell them in your training slang yeah. what really going on, right? Sure. I need to, to, to inquire about something. Yeah. But you're not getting them. Yeah. And is this a way that the banks are able to get away? I don't want to say the word murder, right? Banks get away with murder. But it is as, as, as intense as that. It is as elevated as that, that the banks are not taking responsibility for when it is, for example, you get a message on email yes. telling you that your card has been swiped yes. and it is to purchase something in South Korea. Yeah. And with the, the timing of this being purchased in South Korea, you yeah. know you sleep in local Correct. time. Yeah. What is going on? You're yeah. here in the jurisdiction. Yeah. And the banks, when you call them, the most they are prepared to do yeah. is to tell you that they are going to cancel the card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, you will yeah. have to agree to that. Yeah. But that's it. They, they, they end there and they're not yeah. going any further. So I wanted to get your perspective in terms of you know, the banks, what regulations, how well, are we to treat with this? One of the things is that, yes, you're right. Um, the, the technology, there's technology there that you have to, to go through. A few, um, uh, you know, computer generated um, responses before you get to actual person. And I saw that uh, they do have to pay people, you know, you could yeah. less people in your call center and so on. Um, so that is one. But the, the second thing is that any time you get a uh, suspicious activity on your credit card, yes, you want to inform your bank. <coughs> now, you could also check on your uh, online banking platform to report or send an email and stop your credit card. Some banks, they allow you to, to um, stop your credit card yourself if you, have, you go on the, on the platform and, and stop your, the activity on your credit card immediately. But then, very often, this is where you have to go in physically and fill out a form, a dispute form, right? Fill out, you know, if you do not fill out that dispute form, you will pay the charge, right? That will be to your account. Fill out a dispute form and then they will do that um, investigation and, and you know whether they allow that charge or not allow that charge. But that is something. And the other thing too, you know, we're going paperless. When you fill out the dispute form, ask for a photocopy with your signature and their stamp on it that it received, you want a copy of that, a physical copy of that for your records. You if don't you could, want... If you could take a picture of it. Or take, take a, a picture, picture mm -hmm. or something, because you do not want... Oh, what form are you talking about? We mm -hmm. don't have no copy of that form. We never, never, we never got a copy. It has happened. It has happened, mm -hmm. right? It has happened. Recently, with, with the price mart issue, the things that you think impossible that could never happen, could happen, right? Nobody thought that you never shopped in price mart and you would get a charge on your phone. Right, and when um, okay, when the parties acknowledge yes, it was a, a incorrect charge, we will refund the money, and you realize you didn't get back the full amount, and it, and there was a perfectly logical explanation that they give you. Oh, it's not our fault. It because it was because of the conversion rate. Yeah. I mean, right? I I didn't buy anything. I'm not paying no no conversion rate. I did not buy anything. I'm glad you brought up that, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I want to really take a, a, a job at the banks. Yeah. If it is, there, there was once upon a time, maybe you all could agree or disagree on this, yeah. but I recall if I was leaving the country, yeah. I would have to call the oh, bank and notify yeah, them that I am yeah. going to be out of the country yeah. during this period, so you're going to see my card. Correct. Because otherwise yeah. they would decline yeah, they the transaction. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I still do that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I still but do that. I still, I still do that. Yeah. 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 You do it as a precaution, yeah. but yeah. the banks no longer desire that. They don't want you calling and troubling yeah. them and telling them that. Yeah. They, you, you could swipe. That is why your card could be used to purchase something you know, halfway around the world, right? So, well, so the point I want to make before you, you, you respond, yeah. um, Bushan, is that if it is the bank is charging you per transaction, yeah. right? Yeah. Per transaction. They, yeah. they are not really investigating where it emanates from, yeah. whether it is you're swiping it in Val Park, yeah. whether you're swiping it in West Mall, yeah. you know, long mm -hmm. circular, wherever. Yeah. Um, they are charging you per transaction. Yeah. There's some kind of handling fee, yeah. some kind of processing fee. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there's a, a whole long list of creative names yeah. by which, you know, AKA, they are charging you more interest, right? Yeah. So all of these things take place. Don't they owe you some kind of duty of care 
that with respect to how you are, your, your money is being utilized, yeah. albeit it is being transacted by way of a credit card or even a debit card, yeah. that they should have stronger regulations in place for themselves yeah. as well as the customer, not just fine print to pin yeah. you down, yeah. but they should have more things in place. This is something I wanted to get from you. Well, you're right. Yes, they have, uh, they have that uh, duty of care. And, uh, but you also mentioned a very important thing, and that is the fine print, mm. which is not written in English. It is written in legalese, which <laughs> I don't speak. Right? <laughs> but um, the other thing about it is... And which you, sorry, which you need your reading glasses. Correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I call it right? fine print. Right? <laughs> um, but the thing about the, yeah. the, the fine print and so on, now, there's software in the financial institutions that actually monitors. The software knows your spending pattern, mm. right? And just as we were talking about um, children and you could put on um, uh, blocks and so on, the banks, the, the, that software kind of knows how much you spend for the month, knows where you spend your money. This is how they, they could track money. You know, people think if they go in one bank and they deposit so much and they go in our next bank and our next branch and the software tracking you, not people. Mm. Right? And that's how they could tell if you exceed the amount. Similarly with your credit card, is the software that that um, that tracking the credit card. And why they do that? Because it's supposed to be cheaper than having people actually um, monitor your credit card. Mm. But that doesn't take away, the fact of the matter is that while the banks have a duty of care, your money, the best person to care for that is you. And you should set up, you know, uh, um, on your online platform that every transaction Notification. on your credit card, on your in all your accounts, whatever trans mm -hmm. you get a notification, a notification immediately. immediately. Mm -hmm. Right? So if there's a glitch as happened with, with um, you know, the price month issue uh, recently, or whatever it is, wherever that glitch is, you know, you get a notification so that you know you you're informed right away and you could take some type of um, corrective measure, you know, whether it's going physically or you know, whatever it is. Also, I want to say that um, there's a little number at the back of your credit card, mm -hmm. a telephone number. In case of emergency, if you lose your card or if you're in a foreign country, there's a 1-800 <coughs> number if you're in a foreign country, and there's a local number as well. Um, make sure that you record that number, that telephone number, and your credit card number. In the event that you lose your credit card and you're in a foreign country and you're stranded, you could call that number, they will stop your credit card and they will give you a replacement, whether it's a MasterCard or Visa or whatever. You could get an emergency replacement right away. You know? so, so things like that, don't just you know, put everything to blind trust in the technology. Take some responsibility for yourself so as you, well. You are speaking about the ultimate check and balance, yeah. which is yourself. Yes, as you started off, you need to Correct. reconcile your bills at the end Correct. of the month. Yeah. Well, it yeah. doesn't have to wait till the end of the month, yeah. right? You can do it as regular as yeah. possible. Gentlemen, there is but one minuscule droplet of political blood I have in my system, <laughs> right? So I want to touch on something um, which is topical. Yeah. Um, it, it is in the political domain, but I don't expect political responses. We, we saw with the, the, the ransomware and TSTT. Yeah. Um, first, you, you had from the headlines, you would have seen that TSTT said, well, no data breach. Yeah. And then you saw something saying TSTT says sorry. Yeah. And then you hear about some one million, if I remember correctly, customers' information yeah. is now on the dark web. Yeah. So it means, ladies and gentlemen, that your information, namely your, your name, your address, um, your ID card number, Potentially, I don't know if there was any credit card information associated with any of the names, I'm not sure. Right, well but agree. that information is now lodged on what we call the dark web, meaning it is out there. People who can log Criminal into this, things, yeah. they can access your information. Dede Shambali lives at Lightpool 100 Monroe Road, Kunupia. Yeah. Right? This is where you can get him. This is his home. Yeah. And, and so it goes in, in like that. And, and what I want to, to, to ask you, gentlemen, um, this now, I know, and this is what people would want to hear from experts. Um, do you think that TSTT handled this data breach? We're using them as an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
because you have other entities, as I have mentioned, the AG's office, um, Price Smart, other entities. But in this case, we are using the most topical and one where we know that data has been lodged in the dark web. Yeah. Did they handle it properly? Because we need to know that, look, um, this is what should be the, 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 um, the blueprint yeah. when yeah. something like this happens. And is it that TSTT did or at least attempted to do something immediately? To deal with it. So, so I don't know which one of you would want well, to take a crack at that. If I want to just say from the governance point of view, that is a textbook case of how not to handle it. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> could be worse. And we like but in what we agree with that. People's data, their yeah. confidential information was breached. Mm -hmm. First you said no. Then you said it was old data. Well, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But you know, this, and this is confidence in the organization, but I mean, that to me is what you call uh, a cover-up. You're, you're not letting the population and the victims of this data breach know exactly what was the data that was breached, how could you understand? You, you've put one, uh, from what I've read on this, is 1.2 million. So the, if I just, you know, extrapolate, that 1.2 million, that is the population of Toronto Tobago. The, the people who, the, let us say we, our population is 1.4, the other 200,000 must be children or something like that. But, but then it means that everybody's data w was breached. It was a lot, yeah. Right? And you didn't inform people, you know, A, B, and C, what, whatever, what was my data, what was your data, what was your data, do you need to take any corrective action or not? Mm -hmm. You're still going along like, okay, trying to sweep it under the carpet. What could be worse? Yeah. Now, Darren, okay. is yet based on this, um, we, we will come to the economic impact if we yeah. still have time. But Darren, is there a need in your assessment to have laws to deal with what we have been speaking about today on the program, including TSTT and, and, and that kind of um, ransomware cyber attack? Do, do we need to have laws and, and, and what is the nature of these laws? Maybe you mm. can speak to if possible, anything that can be um, patterned from what we see in other jurisdictions? And the answer to that is a resounding yes, yes, yes. right? Um, you know, laws help govern a society, and it, <coughs> it, it allows us to not, you know, just govern willy-nilly, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things that should be put into place in terms of legislation is mandatory reporting of breaches. Because yeah, yeah. consider this, there, mm -hmm. there have been breaches that mm -hmm. have been happening way back when. Yeah, way back. Not just last year, <laughs> not just year before, way back when, of similar large scale in yeah. terms of information being on the dark web. And it never reached the It never reached line, the headlines. You or me. Yeah. Much less, you know, the rest of the citizens, the citizens right? Yeah. And why is that important? That's important because look at the heightened awareness that the country now has. With this yes. whole thing, here mm -hmm. we are speaking about protecting your own data. And, and doing people are hearing things right. they could put in Now, the news, if yeah. companies were mandated to report breaches, <coughs> I am 100% certain that in November of 2023, we would have been in a better space yes. overall, Correct. right, from a... Uh, a cyber security perspective because people would have seen this is what is happening. Yeah. You know, Trinidad and Tobago is not unique and, and, and separated yeah. from it, right? Yeah. And, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? Even things from a data governance perspective, we all probably heard the acronym GDPR, yeah. right? Yeah. That is, you know, um, a, a, a regulation that comes out of the United Kingdom about data privacy and how we treat with customers data. If this happened in the UK, Depending on the extent of data that came out for you, let's just say your ID and your passport and a credit card information was breached. Did you know for each one of those breaches, there is a fine yeah. that you're going to not pay, you know, you're going to receive money from the organization mm. that that yeah. had leaked from. Yeah. So because you as a citizen actually have rights mm -hmm. to claim and file a claim yeah. for a data breach. Yeah. Right? I, I don't even know how to begin to quantify the amount of money that TSCT might have to pay yeah. to the citizens of Tobago if those laws were in place. Now, if those laws were in place, there's a close up. If those laws, were, you would see corporate TNT at large yeah. being a lot more responsible mm -hmm. with the data that they have. Now, I am very happy that you have <laughs> you know, so yeah. carefully articulated what obtains yes. and which we should aspire to here locally, yes. right? Um, I know we have the Data Protection Act, we have the Computer Misuse Act, and to my limited understanding, uh, I say limited, you know, godly, right? I mean that, you know, you could look at it, you could peruse the law, you can be actively involved in it. Yeah. One thing is clear, 
they provide no relief to a case of what has happened yeah. with ransomware need, and the TSC need yes. So we need to up our laws and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, just because we spoke about the, 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 the children aspect, maybe I can ask Pandachiva Janak. Mm -hmm. You know, when you create laws, you don't create laws that are at large, right? Yeah. You, you know, what, is there any recommendation? I know there is the desire for sure, following on on what Darren said, but um, do you do you care to, to just tell us that um, if, in your estimation, laws definitely need to be tailored to protect the children because we have oh, yeah, spent yeah. the first part of this program dealing with the youths. Yeah, when when we speak in legislation, I mean we speak in on the on the on the broad governmental um, stage, right? But also when we um, there are three things in cybersecurity: legislation, technical, and end user, mm -hmm. right? Education. Those are the three ways to combat. All uh, right. So, but uh, when we need to even break it down smaller, like let's say in companies, they need to have their own internal policies that governs the use of devices, yes. that governs you know what you can do, what you can't do. As we we went back, so when we said um, you know the social engineering. So, for example, a hacker could put some malicious software in a flash drive, drop it by the doorway to the entrance to the to the, the company. And someone will just go, some, oh, somebody dropped the flash drive, yeah. pick it up, go inside the organization, bloop. So you know, <laughs> all these things, you need policies of what you could use, you can't use no outside, fl no, no flash drive that you're not aware of, yeah. that is not yours, all these kinds of things are policies that um, in your homes now, you know, I, I, one of the things on one of my digital guru programs, you need to have agreements with your children, sure. yes. <laughs> agreements, policies with your children, you know, on, how, on usage of the computers. Let them come up with their own, um, you know, um, you say punishments if they bre breach or yes. break the contract. And, and these are simple things that, you know, if we started from small at home, you know, the, 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 the thinking behind it and why it is the end and to protect the child, to protect the parent, to protect everybody involved, right? We need to inculcate that from a very young age. And that's, that's what, uh, what we have been trying to advocate. And again, when we, uh, um, Darren looked at um, in terms of policies and governments, in terms of how you can um, get back from breaches on your behalf, also on the international stage, in Europe and US, I'll come back to the point that these things are taught in the schools, digital citizenship, right? Um, even um, computer um, science is being taught now. I, I recently finished writing a series of books for the UK, right? Teaching from primary school level, all these sorts of things, because this is the age you need to bring the awareness. I know you spoke about real life and uh, but you know like with facebook you're going to the meta universe now eventually it's going to come eh? yeah. the meta universe where everything will actually fully be yeah. virtually online eh? yeah. so now, we need to put things in place i i appreciate that you, so, so you're speaking Bonachiva, in terms of writing your books and stuff which you know you, you're sending to the uk and, and, yeah. and otherwise um i, I suspect you, you may call that partially cyber security, literacy, yeah, um, coordinators. And, and this is, I want you all to, to tell me, um, I have read about um, vulnerability specialists, yeah. um, cyber security analysts. analysts um, yeah. do, do we have sufficient um, first incident responders even when it comes to the cyber security um, threats and, 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 and the actual commission of the ransomware acts of, you know, whether it's terrorism properly defined or whether it is uh, hackers in the case of TSCT. Do we have in Trinidad and Tobago sufficient cyber aware personnel oh, yeah. to treat with situations and therefore to spread this word and to go? I know you go to these schools, yeah. um, Panachiva, I know you're all over in these schools too, both of you gentlemen, but do we have sufficient um, expertise in this area so that we can protect ourselves? I think, for, for example, that example with the TSCT thing. Well, I don't know who, who, who the employees are or what their, their titles are, right? But in general, because it's seen as an additional cost yeah. for this protection to hire. And, and the thing is, most people, they hire a person, yeah. which is not enough for an organization as large as maybe TSCT, where you need a whole team 24-7 looking after your network and your data, right. right? So the investment into the protection of what is required, I don't think and this is not on their behalf or locally, it's, it's in general from my research, 
we don't put that effort into the recognizing the, 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 the uh, benefits of, of this type of um, these titles. So, so, you, so, there's not, so you have captured that we, we are not prepared, we are not, possibly yeah. given our culture and other factors, yeah, yeah, yeah. to invest in, in, in what yeah. is necessary to And it's not no need in that. This is a global uh, issue but where we don't see the... Yeah. Assuming that we are, or a given entity is prepared to, um, Darren, do we have sufficient yeah. personnel, competent personnel, to, to engage in this process where we have to prepare? As I said, you have, you have first incident responders, you have the yeah. cybersecurity analysts, you have the um, uh, vulnerability specialists. Uh, do we have those... You know, that kind of expertise. That skill set. Yes. Yeah, if, if the skill set exists in Trinidad and Tobago, yes. and the answer is yes. yes. We actually have some very highly skilled individuals who can mm -hmm. treat with a breach from, you know, ground zero all the way up to recovery and get your business back yeah. up and running, mm -hmm. right? I think what, you know, um, Pondichiba is referring to is whilst we do have those individuals yeah. who might be acting like a consultant yeah. in the individual organizations the themselves. need to hire these people. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't see the importance. You know, it's like insurance. Yeah. If you have to make the decision on insurance mm -hmm. and you really don't need to go, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. full coverage. Full coverage. <laughs> full coverage. Right, with yeah. third party. Save right? some party. money, full yeah. coverage. Yeah. So I feel we have a, a, a general third party type yeah. approach, approach to, to cybersecurity, cyber security, yeah. you know, yeah. teams within mm -hmm. organizations. Hopefully the breaches and the information that is being yeah. shared now, you know, um, Get gets everybody that. going to, you know, full and I, coverage. I think we have a brain drain as well because the people who are certified, as you're saying here, and if, if you're not getting the opportunities here and somewhere else give, you know, because it's, it's, we're on a global platform now. You yeah. can get hired to go anywhere if you have the correct qualifications and skill sets. But we have seen, however, within the last couple of weeks, a lot of jobs being advertised by many organizations it's, it's, in the cyber security it's, it's, area. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's, it's a change. It's a well, um, uh, uh, gentlemen, I wanted, we, we are out of time. I just <laughs> want to hand over to Bhushan. Bhushan, we have heard from Pandit Shiva on this last point that yeah. we have discussed that um, there needs to be the investment yeah. in the direction of, you know, protecting oneself yeah. um, from cyber risks. Yeah. Um, we have heard from Darren that we do actually have the personnel yeah. We have the expertise available, yeah. but you know people are going the third party route, yeah. right? They are not willing to, to, to go fully comprehensive no. in terms of protecting themselves. I give you the last comment, if you could just wrap up in a minute and a half or so. Well, what I, would you advise? I fully agree from the insurance perspective. <laughs> and just exactly what is insurance? Insurance is that you, you diversify your risk. Insurance is the, the contributions of many for the misfortunes of a few. And what you want to make sure is that Hiring these professionals, having the right equipment, having the right systems, having the right policies, policies. and procedures in place to, to eliminate or minimize the, um, the possibility of a cyber attack, that your business, the integrity of your business rides on that. And that is not something that you could take uh, lightly. That is not an optional to go third party, we, you must secure, the, just as you, you secure the front door of your, your, your business and you, you pay private security to, to, to monitor the alarm system and so on, this has now become a new part of the landscape that you must invest in, it's no longer optional. Gentlemen, I want to thank you um, tremendously for your time this afternoon, all of you having very busy schedules and, and, and hectic with your own commitments, you know, outside of your work. Um, I would like to invite you from now <laughs> that I think this is a necessary program and maybe we can continue this conversation in the new year. Yeah. Um, maybe if not January, but you know, January, February, you have Carnival, you have a lot of things, we have a lot of religious events yeah. that will be going on as well, um, Mahashivratri, etc. So maybe we will be able to have one of these programs where we can delve into a lot more that we touched on today. I am, I am particularly um, curious about the ability to, to, to the legislation which uh, gives personnel, normal citizens, the ability to apply to, to, to get <coughs> some kind of um, redress, yes, yeah. some funding redress in, in the event that their data has been hacked, yeah. um, their, their, their confidence and their security has been breached. Yeah. Um, Pandit Shiva, you spoke a lot about you know, what will help the, 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 you know, the youths, the children, what can protect them. Um, Bhushan, of course, you know, with your flavor, you have spoken about how this applies in the banking sector. Yeah. 
finance sector and you know even individuals how they are able they are the ultimate checks and balances so ladies and gentlemen i thank all of these gentlemen for coming on on the program i hope that uh, you have benefited in some way certainly i have um, in getting you know a better understanding of the cyber security risks um, the threats that exist how it can be uh, you know in terms of your financial data but not limited to and it can even reach home in your homes with your children using your devices. So I am certainly grateful for this session. I want to ask you all to join us again. Our next program will be aired on Thursday. Um, I know it's early days with Jagger and the Awakening. So from time to time, there may be just a little variation in timing, whether it is 4 or 4.30. But I ask you to bear with us that all of those things will be hammered out. Um, I invited these gentlemen for, you know, quarter to four and telling them that it was four <laughs> o'clock, but we were really starting 4.30. <laughs> Let me thank Josh, um, Bimal, Vivek, Francis, the whole technical team um, that, uh, that, that have been here. Um, my own support team, Darren and Karen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, most importantly, I want to thank you, the listening and viewing audience. I want to thank the executive members of the Senate and Dharma Mahasabha, led by the President General and our Secretary General. And with this conclusion, I wish you um, safety, security, cyber security, and all wrong security from the threats of crime that is existing in our country. I really hope that everyone can have a safe and secure, happy Christmas period that we are about to enter into. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and please join us on Thursday. Sitaram. <laughs>